let's just move those two doors out of the way and maybe rotate them and put them here because we'll be still testing them. Um, and okay, let's make some space here. Uh, or, um, let's just move this away, this away. I don't want to delete those actors. I just want to make some space. Okay, so we got now this. Um, let's make another one. Uh, let's call it our blueprint class. Uh, and let's call it... Uh, okay, uh, actor, let's call it BP panel. And we want this fellow, we want to find him and... Oh, okay, too soon. Uh, BP panel, and now we want to find this fellow. Mm, and we want to add this static mesh to the scene root. Okay, that's great. And we want to, for example, add a, a box collision. Like here. And compile and we want to make sure that this collision says overlap all including the pound which is great or you know what we maybe wanted to just uh, overlap the pound and ignore everything else okay so we wanted to overlap pound mm, I want to say on overlap On component begin overlap, other actor, cast to pound. I mean, only pound can really do it, so it's fine. And we can say on component and overlap, and we can do something like a gate or once, which is a simpler gate, honestly still a gate so we do once uh, and we do a sequence and we reset and we do once and we reset start open yes mm, okay mm. So when this happens, we want to add an event dispatcher and want to say trigger. And we can actually even input values into this. So we can have only inputs, we can have outputs, but we can do inputs and we can say uh, actor triggering. And we can say actor, actor reference, and from this actor triggering, do we need anything else? Uh, we can say start. So this is a start stop basically. Okay, so we got this function. And now when you overlap this box, we want to call trigger. And we say start. And actor triggering is the other actor. And then we want to call trigger yet again with actor triggering again, other actor, but we want to say no on the start. So we got this panel trigger and I'm going to delete this panel and I'm going to add this panel now. And I'm going to have uh, a new blueprint that I'm going to make another copy from the cast door. And we're going to call it BP uh, triggerable door. Okay. Uh, so this triggerable door will have interact with door and get the info like it did. It, it opens as it did, but it's a new class. It doesn't implement interface. So there's absolutely no way how we can open this door. It's just staying closed. So if I hit play and I go here, nothing happens. I go here, nothing happens. I try to interact, nothing happens, nothing happens. And everything else still works. 
exactly as it did. So uh, how we're going to make it work is that we're going to edit this triggerable door and we're going to say a new variable that we're going to call um, triggers and those triggers is going to be an actor. Uh, let's just call it trigger, not triggers, single one, but it could be multiple, doesn't really matter. So this is an actor and we want it to be exposed on spawn and want it to be uh, instead of the table and expose on spawn. Now we do that and we say uh, begin play. We get trigger and see if it's valid. And if it is not valid, we want to print string and say no trigger. You know what? Again, um, I'm going to say print text, format text, uh, and we're going to say no trigger for, and we're just going to say self and put it here. So this door will scream that it doesn't have a trigger, but if there is a valid trigger, we want to bind event. No, we, we need to know what class is this trigger. So if it is actor, we need to cast it first, but we don't want to cast uh, into a BP function. So what we need is just say it's BP panel way from the start. So we're going to say BP panel. Yes, change, no problem. Compile, okay. And now this is a panel. So we know all functions and variables that it has inside it including this event dispatcher called trigger. So you can say bind event, bind trigger. So we can uh, unbind all events from this trigger. We can unbind, because we can bind multiple ones. We can unbind single event from trigger or we can bind events to a trigger. So you can bind one or multiple. We can call it multiple times. It's, uh, it will work. We can have multiple triggers and something will happen on this trigger. So we can, um, can we just, okay, we have to do it. So one way to do it is to just push here and say uh, custom event. And this will add a custom event that already uh, copies the signature of this event, which means that it has the same inputs as our event dispatcher. We could, of course, just go here and try to hook it to events that we already have, but this is not a delegate by reference. It's not compatible with, with this delegate, which means that it must have those inputs. But if I make this uh, event absolutely custom and I add the same types of inputs with the same names, it will be compatible with this hook. So let's do this. Mm. And let's call it trigger open. And what we're going to do is going to just say interact with door. And interact with door is doing this, which we don't want to do anymore. We want to read open, but we don't want to set it. So what we want to do first is that read this value and say set and start means open and uh, otherwise it says close. So now we are not setting it from the trigger. We're setting it. Oh wait, we don't need this anymore. Uh, we just need it to be a read value. Uh, now we are reading it from here. And the second bind that we're going to use is going to custom event and info print. And the info print is going to just use the get info or we can say print string or no, print text, uh, format text. I'm going to say one got in uh, got interacted by two when one is just the self actor and 
2 is the actor triggering that we can read from here. So we got those two things going, so let's see how it works right now. If we hit play, and now our actor goes and walk into this, still nothing happens, right? So nothing happens because this trigger is not being linked to this door. What we need to do now is when we compile this, we go here and we need to say trigger and we can pick one from the map or we can even use this pick actor from scene and click this directly. And if we hover over anything that is not compatible, it will not give us this icon. So now that we set it, uh, this should work already, I'm pretty sure of it. Let's see. Yep. And we got information saying BP trigger ball door 2 got interacted by BP mockup character. But if I walk down from this uh, plaque, the door will get triggered again and it will display the same information. Uh, but we can change this information here and we can, for example, add and I am 3 and 3 will be um, make literal string. Okay, so I changed the type of this. And we're going to say opening, oh no, closing. And here will be opening. I just put it here. Okay. And now if I walk into it, it will say, and I am opening and I am closing. So this is the third way of interaction. So you can have different actors that are not uh, same class. They don't use interfaces and they just call on each other. Of course, we could do it the exact opposite way. We could, instead of storing reference here, we could store the reference within the trigger. And from the trigger, we could call an interface function to any other object. So let's say that we do that. We go into our panel and here we not only call this um, okay we not only call this even dispatcher but also uh, we'll have a variable list of doors which is just an actor object reference array and we're going to get those doors we say implement uh, for each implement interface and if it does implement interface which is the interaction tutorial interface um, uh, so if it does implement this interface, what we want to do is say uh, just interact message from this uh, call. And interacting actor is the other actor overlapping. And we can do exactly the same here because here we have start stop, but here we have just toggle, right? So we can do the same here and let's see what happens. We go back here, we go into this actor. Oh, and for this variable, we do also a panel. We need to make it instance edit table and expose on spawn. So now that we have here, we have doors and we get array element and say, uh, those are the CAS doors, so I want to use those, interaction door and the second interaction door. 
And I can actually specify those two as well. And uh, just as expected, nothing will happen to them. But this will just get all doors that we have, uh, except the ones that we already programmed. So now if I hit play and I walk into this panel, nothing happens here, but something happens to those doors. And you can see that my panel now triggers this by event dispatcher and those two doors just by handling event. But I can still interact with those doors directly while I cannot interact with this door other way than from this panel. 